meteorologists, our job is to deliver reliable, trustworthy, and timely information that can save lives. We're adapting to the digital world and the delivery of instant information. But what can we do better to communicate effectively with groups that have been unintentionally isolated from receiving this valuable information? Information is life. Information is, yeah. is everything. So when you don't have information, what do you do? In an era where technology changes constantly, meteorologists are realizing it's time to break away from the conventional. And for the unconventional, meet Michaela Smith. Smith was a student meteorologist at the University of Oklahoma when she went viral for this. Right now, if you look in the pink, we have a winter storm warning for snow, freezing rain, and sleet until tomorrow at 6 p.m. When people are making videos and other things like that that they're sharing, it's hard for hard of hearing and hearing impaired people to kind of keep up with that. And it turns out closed captioning alone doesn't cut it these days. Chris Dekos is on the board of directors for the Tyler Deaf and Hard of Hearing Center. He says members of the deaf community often miss out on viable information with closed captioning. Closed caption is uh, a good step in communicating with the deaf, but what's hard is to be able to read what the caption is saying and glance up to see what's happening. Interpreter and coordinator Alana Husband agrees. Sometimes they do have a pre-recorded caption there, but it's not really, you know, they don't get any of the fun chatting with the other people on the TV. So we miss a lot of different things that are happening at the time because the caption is like, there'll be sun, the temperature is this, just basic stuff. It doesn't really include, it doesn't make us feel connected to what's happening. It's a formula that can be deadly when it comes to severe weather and life-saving alerts. Like when hurricanes hit areas, Deaf people hunker down, but they announce evacuate, but yeah. they don't know what's happening. <clears throat> and then what, what does the fire department do? They drive through the neighborhood with a loudspeaker, like yelling, evacuate. Well, deaf people can't hear. The deaf and hard of hearing community in Tyler is tight knit. The TDHHC Center is a nonprofit organization that works endlessly to meet the needs of our deaf community through social gatherings and services. East Texas in general, is very ignored. Mm -hmm. It's the, the population, the people that live here are not, they don't have a voice because they're out on a farm somewhere or out in the country somewhere and there's not the same like mobilization you have like in Dallas or Fort Worth. Social gatherings like monthly meetups help bridge that gap. This is really a very significant event for the deaf community, you know, to have socialization. You know, very often um, the people in the in the East Texas area live in small or rural communities. And so being able to come here to a set time and place to have that kind of connection is wonderful. The deaf community expressed they would like to see more diversity and inclusiveness through partnerships from other groups, people, and businesses. And although it may be a challenge. Make your thumb nice and straight. They are always open to help. Tornado. Yep. Tornado? The deaf are more than welcoming and invite people in. And even if you don't know sign language, there's always people there that voice and sign, and they will help you. Devices like this are being created to help the deaf and hard of hearing community. When it comes to receiving weather alerts, this attachment plugs into your NOAA All Hazards radio. It will flash a strobe light and vibrate, alerting anyone unable to hear tone alerts. For CBS 19, I'm Colleen Campbell.